The South Carolina deputy who slammed a student on the floor and tossed her several feet has been fired. Deputy Ben Fields was luckily recorded by numerous pupils during that incident. That's why we're hearing about it. Now, this is serious. The FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office have opened a civil rights investigation to determine whether federal laws were violated during the student's arrest. And guess what? It all started over a cell phone, Jose. Now, We've all seen this scene in our own classrooms. The, the, the teacher wants the cell phone. The student is kind of reluctant to give it up. That starts a little bit of an argument. In this case, the teacher called over the school resource officer. He came in, and I'm sure you guys all saw the video. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's impossible to go on Facebook without seeing it. So I'm, I'm sure you guys have all seen it. You know what I'm talking about. But there is, there, there is some racial overturn here, because the officer was white. The student was black. It's over a cell phone. Is this kind of force necessary? Oh, of course not. This is it's complete abuse of, of power. This is brutality. There's no any instance of danger for, for anyone in the classroom. So obviously this is wrong. I'm happy that he got fired. Yeah. Uh, but what worries me is how prevalent this issue is in the school system in this country right now. It happens specifically so much more to black and Latino students than to white students. Yeah. And I think there's a, there's a good reason that you're going to tell me about. Yeah, you know what? But, but before we get there, touching on what you said earlier now about how this was completely unnecessary and abuse yeah. of power. It completely was. Yet, Richland County Sheriff, he came out. He was the one who actually made the decision to fire him. He was saying, well, now we've seen the video and we know that this was terrible and he shouldn't have done that. But she was trying to punch him and she does need to take responsibility. So he's trying to justify what happened a little bit, not all the way, because if he did, he would look like a complete idiot. So he kind of says, well, she was trying to punch him, which completely Big isn't true. I mean, no. we've, we, he's saying what you don't see on the video. Come on, the, the video starts when he's walking in. There's no part before that, right? When she was standing up and punching the officer. I, I, I just hate when police officers play that whole, oh, he tried to hit me with the car, or you, oh my God, he was reaching for a gun game. Yeah, but you just didn't see it. It, it wasn't on camera. So, typical, and we see it all the time. Now, going back to what you were mentioning earlier. Now, the over-policing of schools seems to be becoming more and more common. Now, if we go back to 1975, only 1% of schools in the country had police presence. Fast forward, 2007, that's a huge jump to 40%. Now, I don't know the numbers for 2015, they're not in yet, but I'm sure that's grown even more wow. since then. So we're seeing a huge increase in school policing, and I don't think that's very good because you touched on race a little bit, and you know what? More than 70% of students who refer to law enforcement by school police officers are African American. And we're talking 54,000 juveniles are detained every single day in the US. I mean, do the math, that's a lot of people. Lot of people. And, and, and if we keep over-policing schools, and those numbers keep going up, it's only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse, especially well, for the minorities. What we see here is this policy of, of more officers in schools to create this, let's call it a pipeline in between the schools and the prison system. The first time this, many of these students get in touch with the prison system as right. a whole, it's from being detained at school. Yeah. So we establish for many of these kids just a path that it prevents them from going to college, prevents them from getting a, a job, straight from the school, from the place where you're supposed to go for teachers that will help you be the best version of yourself. But many times these teachers, they will do the easiest thing. Let me call the administrator. Maybe this is a troubled kid that needs extra attention, but I don't have enough time because they don't pay me enough money, so I'm not going to care. I'm just going to call the administrator. The administrator is going to call the cop. The cop is going to send this kid to jail, and his, his or her life will be affected forever because there's this system that benefits, the only that gets benefit from this whole situation, private prisons. Right, I definitely would not doubt that there is a correlation between children who are put in jail early on during their high school days and those who end up in jail later on. Yeah. I'm sure there's a correlation between the two, but as always, we want to know what you guys think about this situation. I think it's ridiculous that I even have to be up here saying, oh, that's awesome that he got fired. Thank God. I mean, it's a no-brainer. I think he should have been fired. Never, never, ever, ever is it ever necessary to throw someone across the room like that when they're clearly complying. Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Lip TV for more.